What's up my fellow Ratbags? I'm Big Worm 380 and today we're going to take an in-depth look at Maverick's Proving Grounds. If you saw the video a couple of weeks ago that I did here on the channel, it covered several different games all in the one video. One of the games I mentioned was Maverick's Proving Grounds. This is the one that I talked about having a thousand player BR, uh, solo, duo, squads, and also an MMO component outside of the Battle Royale matches. So we got a lot of information to cover and some of it's even changed since just a couple of weeks ago. The early access release is just over a week away and the company that's making this game, Automaton, has a lot in store for us. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the first question everybody's asking is when is the game coming out? Well, the game comes out in early release on September 20th. Keep in mind, you're only gonna have access to the game on the 20th if you purchase the Founders Pack. Founders will have exclusive access for the first four weeks and then it'll be open to more players. I stress the word more because it didn't say everyone. I don't know if there's a difference there or if they put that on purpose. I just want to throw it out there because I don't want people coming back and saying, hey, you said, you know, blah, blah, blah. Originally, there was a plan for a thousand player beta style stress test uh, of a random group of founders, but uh, apparently there must have been enough negative feedback from people who had already paid for the founders pack and they went ahead and scrapped that plan. So all anybody that purchases the Founders Pack will be able to get in on the 20th. So the Founders Pack is available at the website uh, mavericks.gg. It's $29.99 US dollars. So if you get the Founders Pack, what you get is you get uh, the early access, which I just talked about for the first four weeks when the game launches in early access. You get 12 months of citizenship, which has to do with the game's in-game economy and whatnot. It has to do with trading with people and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, has to do with purchases and things like that. Uh, founders are going to get, you know, certain features. I don't think it's going to be anything that, you know, anybody that gets the game after release. It's not going to be anything huge. You'll also get uh, exclusive Founders cosmetics. You'll get weapons kits, uh, Founders emotes, Founders icons, posts, and Discord rank. Along with all that, you'll also get uh, access to the Founders Hall, which is the in-game social area and what they call the capital, which is the MMO portion of the game. As far as the full retail release of the game, they've kind of walked that back. They were talking about it being uh, the end of this year, you know, middle end of de December, but they kind of walked that back, I think, because they're trying to manage player expectations. They don't want to be promising too much and not come through on a certain date on something. So they've kind of walked that back, and basically they're starting what they're calling the Forge. Uh, it's not a beta. They do not want this to be considered a beta because the developer said that they feel that betas are pretty much the complete game, and it's more or less a stress test before release. That's not what this Forge is going to be all about. The Forge is the early access period, and they're going to be stripping the game down from what they've built it up to, starting with the core game mechanics on the 20th, and then they're going to be rapid iterating on it every week, adding stuff and fixing stuff. Then they're going to be coming once a month with core, what they're calling core updates, and those are going to be the, the, the major updates to, you know, game mechanics, I think, and stuff like that. So one of the coolest features of Maverick's Proving Grounds is the fact that it's supposed to have a thousand player servers. Now, in my, when I talked about this game in the last video I did, uh, at that time they were talking about the thousand player uh, Battle Royale game mode being... Um, squads well mavericks is going to go into the forge or early access period solo player only but they said it will be a thousand players and i was wondering I, there was questions left unanswered and there still kind of are they're not being real specific but they're kind of explaining it more and starting to make a little more sense i was wondering how exactly they're going to get a thousand people to drop in a game when all these other battle royale games are only doing 100 and you know a game like say PUBG sometimes has issues i can't imagine adding 900 more people into the mix would make the game run any better so they kind of what they're going to do is it's not going to be a thousand people dropping all at once they're going to be doing it in waves okay so one round will be a thousand players total can drop into you'll start off with maybe 200 and then a little bit of time will pass and i'm, I'm assuming at a different approach angle maybe however you drop in They'll drop another 200 in, and I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of time, but what it's going to do is it's going to let some people get in, start getting started, then other people are going to come in. They did say that as far as like XP and uh, rewards granted for survival time is going to be impacted by this. The people that come in at, at the end of the game aren't going to get as many rewards. It's kind of messed up if you think about it, but at the same time, 
the people that come in later in the game are going to have a choice to bring in weapons and, and equipment that, that the other player, the first group's not even going to start off with. So that way it'll kind of be balanced out. This is going to be a big part of the forge and, you know, uh, player feedback and the things that they tweak and all that. It's all going to be part of, you know, shaping the game. They also said that it wasn't a technical restriction as far as doing it in waves. They said there would be a benefit to it. They said the benefit of it, of having the waves, is much less time waiting and no queue times. I'm not really sure how there's no queue times or waiting times with, you know, two drops of 500 or five drops of 200. If you're in the last wave, you're going to be waiting. But, you know, it, who knows? We'll see. We'll see how it's set up. We'll just have to wait and see. So along with walking back kind of on the uh, the full release of, you know, at the end of this year, they, they've kind of gotten rid of the long-term roadmap in general. And when people asked about this, the developer said they don't really want to put out a long-term roadmap because they're going to be iterating on the game so rapidly it makes more sense to show the community the next couple of weeks versus the next couple of months. They say they'll be learning so much every couple of weeks a roadmap any further out than that would probably change and it would just... It would call it would create a situation where again, you know, they would be mismanaging expectations with the players. They might be, you know, something might not get fixed when they said it would, or they might not be at the point of development and you know where the game was supposed to be a month ago, a month later. I think this is really smart on their part because it goes a long way towards not only keeping the community up to date, but at the same time, they aren't promising things months in advance that may not happen in a certain time frame or possibly at all. You know, stuff comes up, uh, updates sometimes cause more problems and pushes everything behind it back. So I think they're, they're, they're being cautious, but uh, they are stressing the fact that they're going to be rapidly updating this game. So another another question people have been asking is how many weapons will there be in the battle royale mode on during the forge period? The developer said obviously there's going to be less guns starting the first day of the forge as opposed to the full launch of the game. He said your staple battle royale weapons are going to be there as in your AK, probably your AR. He actually did give a number saying that they the first week will have three guns. I'm assuming it's going to be a pistol, probably a shotgun and an AR or a sniper or some combination of those four. And they will be adding guns rapidly. Another thing to keep in mind, if you are a content creator of any kind, there will be an NDA or non-disclosure agreement for the first part of the Forge. They said it's not going to last till full release and it, it will only be during the initial part of the forge. They're trying to get the they're trying to launch the game, I'm sure, and just make sure that everything's working fine. They don't want, you know, videos of servers, people crashing and, you know, your regular stuff that happens when a game like this launches. Of course, they're 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 sounding very confident as far as the technical side of the game and what they have going on, like they're pretty much in control of everything. And, uh, and that's good to hear, and I hope that's the case. The managing director, James Thompson, said the reason for the NDA at the beginning of the Forge is actually because it's going to be changing. The, the game is going to be changing and evolving so quickly within the first you know, part of the Forge that he doesn't want a lot of, uh, a lot of video out there of like the first week when it's going to be sending, you know, basically people will get the wrong idea of what the game is going to be. And, you know, I can see that too, but... I mean, come on, it's early access, 1,000 players in a server, Battle Royale. I mean, there's going to be issues. So it's probably a little bit of both, to be honest. The Forge is going to start off with solo Battle Royale only. They will be adding duos and squads. And they did specifically say that adding those two other modes to the Battle Royale is at the top of their implementation list. I'm guessing, like everything else that they said with this game, you know, how, how fast things happen, how fast the game launches, how fast they add stuff is all going to depend on how it's going within the Forge. So let's hope that the, the fir very first part of the Forge goes pretty smooth and we'll be getting duos and squads shortly thereafter. So that's the new info on the Mavericks Battle Royale portion of the game. I am curious still to learn more about the MMO portion. Um, they haven't given a whole lot of information on that if you go to their website and click on the game part you can actually look and it talks about you know story driven narrative and you know all kinds of stuff and i'm not real clear on how exactly that's going to tie into the battle royale part um a lot of people in the comments are you know talking about it and speculating and wondering 
I'm not going to speculate. I, I'm just going to wait and see what they do with it, but it will be interesting to see having an MMO tied with a Battle Royale. So I'm pretty excited for this game. Uh, I actually went ahead and got my Founders Pack, and I'll be ready on the 20th uh, to try this thing out. Now, of course, I won't be able to post any content, but uh, hopefully that NDA will be lifted soon uh, after, after the launch, and uh, we'll be able to get some video up and give you some impressions of it. If you look up Mavericks on YouTube, you can see they've already got developer videos going up. And that's a good thing. I think that's one of the most important things these guys can be doing that some other developers aren't very good at. And this is what I was talking about earlier. It's really important to keep your community informed, especially in an early access title. People don't like paying money for a game and not hearing what's going on. People want to be involved. You know, the whole point of early access is to get the community involved, build a community, have them, you know, help you build the game, improve it. And these guys seem like they're doing, doing it right as of right now. Now, that's easy to say before early access has even started, but we'll see how it goes. Again, they're going to be uh, they're going to be updating the game weekly with small updates. They're going to be adding things, uh, adding guns, adding, you know, different uh, elements. You can already see here they've already got plans for the initial release being on the 20th of September, and their first rapid update is going to be on the 27th a week later. And then the first core update or monthly update being, you know, after the 27th of September, that'd be late October, early November. So they've got a plan. Uh, hopefully they keep up their, uh, you know, working with the community and keeping everybody posted. Like I said, this is going to be, this is a very ambitious project. Uh, this isn't just a, you know, not to say that, you know, a hundred player battle Royale isn't a big project, but this is, this is pretty big. Uh, they're using new technology. They're they're The game's going to be running on the Crytek engine. And from what the developers have said in some of these videos that they have, the developer videos, it allows them to do some things that, um, other, other games running on other engines can't really do, or they can just do it. They can do it more efficiently. So the game will run better, you know, as far as like rendering and, different things like that. And they have uh, they have a neat mechanic as well. You'll be able to track people. Uh, the environment's, you know, going to be dynamic uh, all the way down to you'll be able to track people from walking through grass and things like that. So I think it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to add a different element to, you know, trying to find people. You'll actually be hunting people. But that's pretty much going to be it, guys. Uh, let's talk about it in the comments. What do you think about this game? Is anybody getting their Founders Pack? You guys interested in this? Or do you think this is just going to be another, another Battle Royale game that's not going to amount to much? And as usual, if you haven't already, subscribe to Jade Plays Games for all your gaming news. And if you want to, go check out my channel, Big Worm 380 Gaming. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.